friends, good morning. You wanna see something crazy? So I'm working on the truck and I want to trace all of the electrical wires. What I'm doing is gonna be putting the, uh, the inverter here, my three house batteries here. This is the existing wiring that was already in the truck. So I just identified uh, this right here comes directly from the shore power plug. So that's my input to the inverter. And then this is the output from the inverter going to the house AC. And then what these are, the, these were the positive and negative battery cables. Uh, you know, the inverter was missing. So this is remnants of what was here. Uh, am I gonna reuse it? Um, some of it, not all of it. So in the cabinet next to it here, I want to show you. I hope you can see this. So this wiring, this is kind of what I'm up against here. These ambulances have a lot of wiring. So this is behind uh, this panel. It was easy to take the screws out. I was lucky that I now have access to this. So what I'm trying to do is trace the electrical that's supplying DC to the house because I want to connect it up to the house batteries. And right now it's tapped into the cranking batteries which I don't want I don't want the house DC power coming off the cranking batteries I want it to um, be isolated and only come off of my house battery so the inside the house there's a like a power distribution cabinet where all of the the DC items are fed from and there's a obviously a large um, diameter positive and negative cables I want to trace where they go um, and if need be, I've got to replace them and run them right out here to my new batteries. So I'm, that's what I'm doing is I'm trying to, trying to trace those wires. Uh, I'm going to, first thing I'm going to do is do a little bit of cleaning and vacuuming in here. Uh, and see if I can identify where the wires are. So this is what I'm doing today. Good morning. Today we're doing the wiring for the inverter and the batteries. So I've got myself set up out here. Uh, I've drilled a new access hole here. I found this um, PVC, this gray PVC. It was in the electrical section of Lowe's yesterday. It's some type of cabling, reducer, sleeve, um, but what I'm using it for is just uh, similar to what these are here. It's just a protector for the cable against the, the cut edge of the aluminum uh, diamond plate. So fit in there really well. I threw some sealant around it to hold it in there so it's drying up right now. Uh, that's the Motocraft gray gasket maker sealant which I know it's pretty rock solid and of course my big cable doesn't fit through there but my big cable will uh, feed through this older style one and the two aught will feed through this one here so I've got one of each size going through so um, I've got everything cleaned up here this cable here which comes from my shore power. I'm actually gonna replace this with a heavier gauge. This is 14 gauge uh, wire and the inverter, the Ames inverter suggested uh, 10 gauge or larger for the shore power input. So I got some 10 gauge three element yesterday. I bought 10 feet of it over at Lowe's so that's gonna that's gonna replace it I just want to be sure you know it's definitely more robust if you can see that this 10 gauge three element 
it's nice and thick so it's an easy change out uh, the shore power plug obviously I had replaced that recently so this is really easy to pop this out and um, I can I can get my hands on the wire itself there it is this is it right here where it comes from the plug and it just goes straight down and out right here it's one of these two and goes right back to to this cabinet here so it's a real simple replacement I can do that real easy uh, so right now I am I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and replace that AC wire while I wait for this gasket sealer to skin up some more and uh, and then I'll jump back into the DC side of it so okay the the 2 aught wire will come up here through the seat and go to this uh, disconnect switch. So what this will allow me to do is when I'm driving, I can throw the switch, which will charge the house, charge the house batteries off of the alternators. Then once I park and I'm going to use house power, I disconnect the switch so my starting batteries aren't uh, powering my uh, my inverter and, and things like that so uh, that's just until I get solar installed once I get solar installed hopefully I won't need to charge from the alternators I really don't want to to do that I don't really want to mess with this switch a lot so these here were disconnected um, under the seat uh, I, I, I really should trace them and figure out where they go now that I'm looking at it, if I have enough, if I have enough clearance through that hole to bring my two aught cable up and leave these still here, uh, otherwise I'm going to have to snake them back through the floor and um, secure them somewhere underneath the truck, which I I'd rather leave them up here. I don't know what they're for. I've never traced them out. Uh, so, just got to answer that question here real quick. Actually, I see I'm going to trim this carpet back a little better. So, this sealant here, I want to get some of that. Actually, I've got a bunch of gasket sealer. I can use that, right? That's, I have plenty of that. I have RTV black and plenty of different tubes of gasket maker, so I can, I can use some of that. All right, I'm gonna turn the camera off and work on this for a while, and a lot of things that need to go right. I got my eight gauge cable here. This is gonna be my ground, chassis ground. Uh, I shouldn't say chassis. This grounds the inverter case to the truck chassis. Um, they, they recommended eight gauge, so I got uh, some 8 gauge wire and I have an exact I have a perfect place for it on the on the frame where there was an existing ground that's no longer being used so there's a nice bolt hole I'm gonna put the wire brush on the drill and get up under there and clean the frame off and then uh, put a nice ring terminal on the end of this and it'll bolt right there and it's it's really right on the other side of that cabinet right so this this wire here doesn't even need to be this long it'll probably end up being more like three feet long wish me luck on all this this is to me this is a huge step to get this done so i'll check in with you later okay i want to give you guys a look at what the what the inverters what the inverter looks like installed so I've got uh, this is the Ames power pure sign 3000 watt and then I have the three Renogy 100 amp hour batteries whoa lefty hold on um, so there's my cabling that where it goes through the cabinet wall These, these two here, this is the AC side. So this inverter has the terminal block on the end here. 
so these are hardwired in uh, and then the DC side um, so I I come off the batteries I go through this fuse I have a 400 amp fuse and then it feeds to the inverter and then here's the negative to the batteries and then for the house DC side uh, I have two aught cable and this other I have a 300 amp fuse with two aught and those go into the power distribution cabinet inside the house um, so this is complete up and running everything functions this is the cable that goes inside for the remote uh, LCD panel uh, control panel and here's the here's that 8 gauge uh, inverter ground wire that I talked about that goes um, that goes through the cabinet and then is grounded to the frame of the truck and then this is the battery temperature monitor that plugs into the inverter uh, and it's I've just got it taped onto the side of the center battery I've got to get some input on that if you if you know of a better way or how I should attach that uh, battery temperature monitor please let me know um, you know cool temperatures like this I don't know I don't know when that comes into play if it's only during um, hot periods um, so this is fully functional in this cabinet this shelf here this is a a bolt-in shelf that was part of the ambulance so it's bolted it has four bolt positions so this can hold all kinds of weight. You know, I was concerned about putting a, an aluminum shelf over top of battery terminals, but this shelf is going nowhere. Um, I've stacked a lot of weight on there and it's, uh, it has no, uh, no problem holding it. So to hold the batteries, I went with the aluminum angle bracket. So I have, a, I have them pushed against the back wall, uh, the inside wall that is. I've got an angle here angle here and then a third one on this side and then you can see I use these cleats here and I have a battery hold down strap that goes up and over there's cleats on both ends and that holds them tight so they're in there pretty rigidly they're not going anywhere um, so this is the completed system hey